This is America's Roundtable from Washington, D.C., an initiative of the U.S.-based think tank, the International Leaders Summit, Lanza Broadcasting Corporation, and the Pledge Radio in Michigan. I'm Joel and Sami, your co-host, joined by economist Natasha Sartorj, co-founder of the International Leaders Summit. America's Roundtable brings together leading voices from business, government, media, and the public policy arena. Thank you for joining us on America's Roundtable. This weekend, we're joined by Cheryl Cumlin. She is the online opinion editor for The Washington Times. In addition to writing daily commentaries on politics, she also writes a semi-regular Eye on AI column for The Washington Times. She's an author, writer, and speaker, passionate about topics related to the country's Judeo-Christian roots, the Constitution, politics, and policy, United Nations, and sovereignty issues. Her latest book, The Devil in D.C., Winning Back the Country from the Beast in Washington, D.C., includes a foreword by Mike Huckabee. Cheryl Cumley is also the author of Police State USA, How Orwell's Nightmare is Becoming Our Reality. She's worked for years in newspaper journalism, winning numerous investigative and hard news awards in the process, particularly for her use of the Freedom of Information Act and Sunshine Laws to hold government officials accountable, and in radio newsrooms as a host, producer, and writer. Cheryl Cumley is a U.S. Army veteran. Welcome, Cheryl. Great to have you joining us on America's Roundtable. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Events commemorating the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II have been cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Victory in Europe, hence VE Day, on May 8, 1945, saw America, Britain, and their allies formally accepting Nazi Germany's unconditional surrender for after almost six years of war. Hitler's Nazi German troops throughout Europe finally laid down their arms, surrendering to allies. Allied forces. Uh, Cheryl, we thank you for your years of service to our nation in the U.S. Army and your husband's courageous military service in the Marines, dating back to the end of the Vietnam War, which he shared with us all. What can our fellow Americans learn about America's leadership in confronting evil, and especially during the Second World War, with a unique generation sacrifice in advancing the great cause of freedom? at one of history's most important crossroads? What a great question. And you know what? Here's what Americans should take right now uh, as we look back in history at our sacrifices of our brave and courageous soldiers and the, 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 the great freedoms that America ushered, ushered in by participating in this allied effort. Eternal optimism. You know, right now in America and around the world, but particularly in America where freedom is supposed to reign, individual God-given freedom is supposed to reign, we're facing some bleak, dark times, and we're fighting we're fighting forces that in America we never thought we would have to fight. We're fighting against our own politicians who are just taking blatant overreach and, and killing our Constitution as a means of protecting Americans from the coronavirus. And say what you will about COVID-19, but the fact is our Constitution is being derailed. And so it's, a, it's an eternal optimistic time to look back at, our, at America's great sacrifices and contributions uh, in World War II. It, you know, America started off as an isolationist type um, in, in that period. And it was only after the attack on Pearl Harbor that we decided to get involved. And we didn't just get involved. We didn't tippy-toe into that. We sent something like 12 million uh, Americans to fight the effort. And at the same time, we turned out this astonishing number of manufactured planes and ships and all kinds of war necessities. And we didn't just keep them to ourselves. We, we shared them. We shared them with the Soviet Union. We shared them with Britain. And the fact is, without America, America's contributions of both manpower and resources, the Allied effort would have, would have fallen. Hitler's atrocities would have just spread, and Germany's occupation would have expanded. And the, World War, the end of World War II, the outcome would have been markedly different. So let's remember in these bleak times right now that we're facing that America had some amazing days of contributions, 
And that's the soul and heart of America, to give, to go where others don't want to go, and to give our full 100 percent fighting uh, in spirit when times call for it. So we're all about freedom in America. We've been all about freedom from day one. We've seen this at different points in history, not just World War II, but World War I as well. If America hadn't entered and come to France's aid, Germany would have won that war as well. Mm -hmm. And here we are facing some dark times in America. So let's be optimistic and inspirational, take inspiration from our past wins and see that freedom is certainly not dead in America. Cheryl, what do you think was so unique about the generation that heeded to this calling during World War II, a calling that was really greater than themselves? And what can our generation and the youth of our nation learn from their experiences and sacrifices? Yes, the greatest generation, right? It's not called the greatest generation for nothing. I think during that period, Americans didn't need government to tell them, hey, we have a common enemy and we all have to fight it. We didn't need government to crack down and regulate us into doing actions that we knew were best for America to take. When we were attacked, America just mobilized, and not just not just the blue-collar Americans or not just the, the military families of America, all of America. We had Hollywood types, the very types that today condemn America's greatness and condemn America's military. We had Hollywood types just give up their careers and enter the military to fight on behalf of America. So it was the patriotism, the love of America's exceptionalism rooted in individual God-given freedoms that drove Americans to voluntarily sacrifice whatever they could for the war effort, instead of waiting for government to tell them what to do, and in some instances, tell them what to do in over-the-top, unnecessary, and random ways. Natasha, your family in Europe went through some very trying times, and your father was a World War II concentration camp survivor. Could you briefly share your family's story for our listeners? Yes, actually, and I would like to affirm what Cheryl shared. Actually, if it wasn't for American soldiers who came to liberate Europe, my family would not have survived, and I wouldn't be here today. It is important commemoration, the end of World War II in Europe, uh, for my parents who still reside in Europe and for all of us Americans. My father and his family members were captured by the Axis forces. Uh, my father, his brother, and my grandmother were sent to a concentration camp in northern Italy, then under the brutal regime of Mussolini, while my grandfather and two other older brothers were sent to a concentration camp on an island in Croatia. My father was just 11 years old. On September 3, 1943, everything changed. On that day, Montgomery's 8th Army began its invasion of the Italian mainland, and the Italian government agreed to surrender to the U.S., British, and British Indian soldiers who landed on Italy's shores. And that was the day, which my father still vividly shares today, as the day when the gates of the concentration camp were made wide open, and they did not know why. They were treated badly in the camp, and they were scared to leave. They did not know then that American forces landed on the Italian peninsula and that Italy's government surrendered. They did not know that they were freed at that time. Eventually, people started leaving the camp. And my father, Tom, the grandmother, Victoria, and the youngest brother uh, walked for days to arrive at their home in Croatia and to realize that the house was burned down by Hitler's troops. On my maternal side, my grandfather died in a battle fighting against Nazi troops entering the northern Adriatic in Croatia. Cheryl, on this note, as we talk about you know, the rise of anti-Semitism in America and Europe, also Holocaust revisionism. When we remember this period, the 75th anniversary of um, the commemoration of the VE Day and what our 
our American generations prior to us did to sacrifice so much for freedom. What would your message be to our fellow Americans and to others abroad in light of what we're seeing as far as anti-Semitism and Holocaust revisionism? The need for truthful education, uh, truthful, historically accurate education in public school systems, not just in America, but around the world, is crucial. You know, the upcoming generations, if they're not taught things like the truthful versions of history, of World War I, of World War II, if they're not taught things in America like the importance of the Constitution and founding fathers and freedom and where that freedom comes from. In America, it comes from God, not government. If they're not taught these simple principles and these these basic ideas and truths, then it's not just America that's doomed. The world is doomed. And I have to say that I, I find it very um, interesting that that a day before uh, May, you know, May 8th, of course, is this day that we're talking about in history, but the, the previous day, May 7th, is in America the National Day of Prayer. And these things go hand in hand, freedom and appealing to God for intervention in America. America was built on that basic system, Judeo-Christian principles, where our rights are inherent. They don't come by way of government. They come by way of a higher spiritual force. Just by being born, you are ingrained with certain unalienable rights. And the National Day of Prayer recognizes that. And hand-in-hand with, you know, historical truths about World War II, that's where our hope, our, our hope in eternal truths and freedoms come from. They come from God. They come from recognizing first God and then seeing how these Judeo-Christian principles play out in, in the freedom fights that go on around the world, both historically and going forward. Thank you for really communicating the importance of that Judeo-Christian foundation that America has and the importance of the U.S. Constitution. And uh, we read your recent piece in the Washington Times, and uh, its title is Executive Orders Are Not Laws. And if I may just uh, share very briefly with our listeners the introduction to that article, I quote, COVID-19 has shined some important light on the tendency of a government to do as founding fathers warned, stretch and reach and overreach and tread into places it doesn't belong. And as the executive orders come fast and furious from governor's mansions around the nation, it's high time for a reminder. Orders are not laws, unquote. Cheryl, could you uh, kindly elaborate on your article and, and what were you trying to drive as a message to our fellow Americans in states like Michigan, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and other places? Look, most of the crackdowns on individuals in America right now have come by way of executive orders. They started with the president's declaration of a national emergency and several orders issued from the White House that were more recommendations for best practices going forward for American citizens. But the way the states have interpreted those orders has been more of mandates. And governors in states have issued their own executive orders that have clamped uh, basic civil rights, basic freedoms that American citizens have, such as the right to go to work, the right to make an income, the right to walk freely uh, about the streets. And you can make the case that these are all necessary orders these are all necessary protections that government has taken in order to secure the health and, and safety of the American people. But you can't make the case that executive orders are not laws, because in America we have a constitutional system where the people elect those they want to represent them and uphold constitutional principles. And the rule of law states that 
the politicians are bound to implement laws, not just issue orders as if they're kings. And so when you have governors issuing executive orders that clamp constitutional rights of individuals, we have to fight back. We have to say, hey, that's not a duly passed law by my elected officials. This is more like something that the King of Britain would do back in Founding Fathers' times and that Founding Fathers would have fought against. So we have to take these executive orders and hold them to the standard of individual rights and constitutional principles. And if they don't meet those standards, then we have to fight back against them. And the the frequency by which government these days has been issuing executive orders, not just in, in current times, but in past administrations, in past decades, is alarming to me. And it should be alarming to all American citizens because it strips you of the right to vote and hold individuals accountable for their actions in public office and makes makes the rule of law in America become whatever uh, a certain executive thinks it should be at the time. Cheryl, your words and your encouragement on this period of time as we commemorate the 70, 75th anniversary of the VE Day, the Victory in Europe Day, uh, is much appreciated. Cheryl Cumley is the online opinion editor for The Washington Times. And in addition to her daily commentaries on politics, uh, she also writes a semi-regular uh, eye on AI column for The Washington Times. She's a prolific author and a Army veteran. Thank you so much for joining us on America's Roundtable. Thank you, Cheryl. Hey, thank you both for having me. God bless. Thank you for joining us on America's Roundtable, a radio program from Washington, D.C., with America's leading voices joined by leaders in business, government, media, and the think tank arena. America's Roundtable is an initiative of the International Leaders Summit. We thank Lancer Broadcasting and the pledge for their partnership. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at iLeadersSummit as well as at America's RT. On Facebook, International Leaders Summit, and America's Roundtable. Visit our website at iLeadersSummit.org. Thank you for joining us on America's Roundtable.